Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We are in chapter 31 today, verses 15 through 17. And very strangely, but not, not really strangely, but we're suddenly the Sabbath has popped up again in the book of Exodus. Uh, perhaps people might be surprised. Let's take our scriptures for today, verses 15 to 17. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall surely be put to death. So the sons of Israel shall observe the Sabbath to celebrate the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the sons of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but on the seventh day he ceased from labor and was refreshed. Okay, so we're still talking about the Sabbath that we talked about yesterday morning. And I hope you'll notice that in verse 13 and in verse 17, right here in chapter 31, the reason uh, this is a the reason given that you should worship on the Sabbath, part of this says what? This is a once weekly sign. This happens every week, every week forever. Uh, for this, this sign is going to perpetually happen. This is a sign of the everlasting covenant, verse 16. So God wants us to remember we're in covenant relation with him every Sabbath. Every seven days, he wants to remind us, you know, humans are a little bit forgetful, right? Have you ever noticed that? And he wants us to remember it on a weekly basis. You're in covenant with me. I am your God. You're my people. Let's, uh, I won't forget it, you know, but I don't want you to forget it. And so he gives us the Sabbath. It's his holy day, but it is a blessing to us. He wants to help us he remembers, and he wants us to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So the Sabbath is there to guard us so that we don't lose our mind and forget who we are. We are creatures. We are dependent creatures. He is the creator who gives life. A question comes up right here about the Sabbath being a sign between God and the Jews forever. It sounds like, you know, this is a Sabbath. It's a sign that God has made between him and the Hebrew people forever. Is that the right way to look at this? Well, in the Bible, I'm, I can't unpack it here in, a, in such a tiny space of time, but in the Bible, forever is as long as something lasts. God is eternal. God has always existed. He will always exist. So for God, uh, forever is eternity. But for humans, forever is as long as something shall last. Okay, and again, that's just if you look at the Bible definition. I know that many of us have the Greek definition or the Hollywood definition that forever means this kind of endless amount of time. But if we look in the Bible, you know, David, 1 Samuel chapter 1, David is lent to the Lord uh, forever. How long is he lent to the Lord? As long as he shall live, he's lent to the Lord. And we could look at other cases like that. The Bible makes it pretty clear that that forever is simply as long as something lasts. So when we think about this being a sign between God and his people forever, uh, remember, what kind is, is true circumcision like just for Jewish people or is it true circumcision of the heart? Remember the Sabbath commandment. What's the reason given? That in six days God created the Jews? No, in six days God created the world and everything that's in it. Does everything that's in it include non-Jews? Yes, there weren't any, there weren't really too many Jews on first day, sixth day of creation. So um, the Sabbath is for all human people. The Sabbath is for everybody. It belong, it's, belongs to God, but he made it for man. And so where am I going, I guess, with all this, just to cut it short, because we have to cut it short in a short devotional thought like this. The Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You might read something like Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3 tells us what? It's because of God's mercy that God's that the, the people are not consumed. God is unchanging. His love for us is unchanging. God's character never changes. He is perfection. His character does not change. It doesn't become less perfect at some point. So God is uh, love for his people, for all people, is the same forever. Uh, what about the Jewish people? Uh, in particular, the Hebrew nation. Were they obedient to God? Did God kind of make something where like, by the way, these people, uh, they're forever okay. They're never going to come under probation, even if they don't change their approach. Well, that's not the case. The case is that every human group, every group of people 
uh, sort of exists under a probation, so to speak. Ultimately, there will be a group of people who are destroyed. I mean literally, actually ended, destroyed, uh, people who choose to go against God and uh, refuse to reconcile with his kingdom. So they'll live forever. We'll all live forever. We'll all live as long as we live. Some of us will have eternal life and we'll never die ever uh, after we've been resurrected or maybe we'll be alive when Jesus comes and we'll never die. Uh, some of us will go on through eternity that way because God gives us a gift of immortality. 1 Corinthians 15 tells us that immortality is a gift. God gives it to us. 1 Timothy uh, 6 Verse 15, 16, God alone has immortality. He can give it to us as a gift, okay? So God is the only one who's immortal. You and I are not immortal, but God will give to us a gift of that, and some of us will live on. Some will live only as long as uh, they exist, and then they'll be destroyed when they surround the holy city. Revelation chapter 20, a fire will come down from God out of heaven and destroy them. Malachi, at the end of the Old Testament, tells us that um, Satan and his followers will be destroyed root and branch. All the unrighteous will be destroyed. You can read it in chapter 3, uh, in, in right in there. So, friends, I guess what I'm saying is that everyone's on probation, so to speak. It's not particularly always emphasized, but the Jewish nation was not a nation that uh, uh, is just given carte blanche and whatever happens. No, there are people that are weeded out and there are people that are, that are grafted in. So in that sense, I guess you could say there's a continuation of Israel, but we have these wrong ideas that somehow there's a group of people who uh, are automatically, no, there are conditions to the covenant. Read them in Read them back there in the book of Numbers, chapter 28. There's conditions. And, and if people don't fulfill their conditions, then they're out of the covenant. Simple. And so does the church get a free pass today? Mm, no. Do God's people or the church ever get a free pass? Like, look, you can be my people and you don't have to have anything like my character. I'm just, just, just declaring it. You're going you're gonna, to, I'm giving you gifts forever. That's all there is to it. No, that's not the way it is. So we want to come over into God's side. We want to have our thoughts and feelings changed so that they are in harmony with God. God is calling for that. God wants that in us. And so uh, the Sabbath here is not just for the Jewish people. The Sabbath is for all human people. This is for all, which the only kind of people there is, is human people. The Sabbath is for humans. And so God was calling us. He wants us to join in. Look at Isaiah 56, Isaiah 58. People who were outside his people can be, will become his people. And people who are his people, uh, read it in uh, Romans 9, 10, 9 and 10 and 11 there. Paul talks about it. Some of those uh, are going to be out because they choose not to go God's way. Some will be grafted in. So God always has a people. He has a remnant. He preserves a remnant. But the remnant isn't there because they have certain DNA or they have certain blood or they have a certain shape of nose or they have a certain name. They are there because they are choosing God's way. So basically, the whole creation uh, is has to come into uh, harmony with God, uh, his unselfish way of running the universe. So I would be careful here. Some people take a text like this. Uh, and they say, look, this is a Sabbath, it's about the Jews and God, and Gentiles have no part in it. Uh, I'm sorry, go read the, go read the Ten Commandments. Uh, the Sabbath is about people. It's not about Jews. Jews are people, so they're included, but the Sabbath is for everybody. So anyway, some will disagree with me, but um, <laughs> I believe that God wants us to come in alignment with his character and that he does not take fake things and just accept them. So we want to come into his line, and his line includes the seventh day observance. So friends, it's here. We'll talk about it again when we get to chapter 35, but the Sabbath is a much bigger deal than most people think about. You know, are we really following Jesus, or are we just sort of selectively being Christians? Because I would say a selective Christian isn't a Christian at all. And I want to make sure that I surrender God completely to him and to, my, to the utmost. I want to receive all of his grace and help so that I would be a Christian fully. And I would receive his Sabbath or any other which thing he should, chooses to show me that's in the word. I want, to, I want to be in harmony with him, fully in harmony with his unselfish character, more like Jesus. And that's what I want to be. And that's how I want to be a Christian. And here there's a hint to us, an important hint that God has a sign between him and his people forever. 
Yeah, this doesn't change because God doesn't change. He wants us to have rest in him. He wants us to trust him. He is our creator, our recreator, never changes. And so I want to say yes to God and even yes to observing the seventh day Sabbath, the same one that Jesus did. All right, I'm going to stop there. We'll see you tomorrow morning and we'll look at verse 18. God bless you. Thank you.